This is an Eagles Landing production. God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. Exodus, the 13th chapter in the 17th verse. Why not? Because the people needed disciplining and molding as a nation. They would have been destroyed by the way of Felicia. But by the way of the wilderness, they were trained slowly for the great task at their journey's end. God, who chose the route, also chose the leader. God, who disciplined the people, also disciplined the man who led them. History and experience seem to point to the fact that God's line for us is not usually a straight line, but a winding zigzag path. The roundabout way may be the nearest. Over the Apennines, there is a wonderful railroad. One passes through 43 tunnels in less than 70 miles. Magnificent outlooks, but every few minutes, a tunnel. The road has been built to carry the traveler to his destination by the shortest way. Anyone getting off at the first station simply because he did not like tunnels and striking into the mountains to find another path would be almost sure of being lost and starving to death. Can we not believe the same thing of God's way? His way lies through tunnels, long ones often, but is the best and the safest road. And it is not all tunnels. In the region of the high rocks, there are the most glorious prospects, places so full of beauty and commanding such outlooks of love and mercy ought to reconcile us to the intervals of darkness. Be not afraid of the winding way if God turns you into it. Travel the road he points out to you. God brings men to his consummations only by his own road. We climb the height by the zigzag path and wondered why until we understood it was made zigzag to break the force of the hill. A road straight up would prove too steep for the traveler's feet to tread. The thought was kind in its wise design of a zigzag path instead. It is often so in our daily life, we fail to understand that the twisting way our feet must tread by love alone was planned. Then murmur not at the winding way. It is our father's will to lead us home by the zigzag path to break the force of the hill. Simply following God is the true philosophy of life. 
I'm your host, Pastor Will. Welcome to In The Moment. WLAS 95.3 and Wilfred S. Stockton Ministries welcomes you to In the Moment with your host, Pastor Will. You are now being presented an invitation of inspiration, motivation, education, and salvation. There are two types of people who will tell you that you can't make a difference in this world. Those who are afraid to try and those who are afraid you will succeed. Opportunities of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Welcome to In the Moment. To in the 100% moment. love, 100% skill, 100% concentrated power of will, 100% pleasure, 100% pain, 100% reason why you remember his name. Remember his name. Remember his name. uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples and after encouraging them said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He traveled through that area speaking many words of encouragement to the people and finally arrived in Greece where he stayed three months. Because some Jews had plotted against him just as he was about to sail for Syria, he decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea. Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, Timothy also, and Tychicus and Trophimus from the province of Asia. These men went on ahead and waited for us at Troas. But we sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread, and five days later joined the others at Troas, where we stayed seven days. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed for Assos, where we were going to take Paul aboard. He had made this arrangement because he was going there on foot. When he met us at Assos, we took him aboard and went on to Mytilene. The next day, we set sail from there and arrived off Chios. The day after that, we crossed over to Samos, and on the following day, arrived at Miletus. Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, for he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem, if possible, by the day of Pentecost. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you? Yes. Sir. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. Yes. Yeah. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. <sighs> now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today 
that I am innocent of the blood of everyone. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, some will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. We must remember these things. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Oh, yes. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. All around shadows, you lit a spark in me. Down the boundaries of sin and Calvary, the all consuming fire. I said, Be your place, your love is like a wildfire, spread into the farthest reach. Your love my eyes to see the riches of your mercy and made my cold heart beat the all-consuming fire
Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit. All day long they press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long. In their pride, many are attacking me. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God I trust, and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life. Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape. In your anger, God, bring the nations down. Record my misery, list my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this, I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere human beings do to me? I am under vow to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling. That I may walk before God in the light of life. Yo, 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 it ain't real unless it's past the wheel in the morning. He will quiet you with his love. Zephaniah, the third chapter in the 17th verse. Are you reading this verse as a child of God? who is experiencing a crushing sorrow, a bitter disappointment, or a heartbreaking blow from a totally unsuspected place? Are you longing to hear your master's voice calling you, saying, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid, yet only silence the unknown and misery confront you jesus did not answer a word god's tender heart must often ache listening to our sad complaining cries our weak impatient heart cries out because we fail to see through our tear blinded, short sighted eyes that it is for our own sake that he does not answer at all or that he answers in a way we believe is less than the best. In fact, the silences of Jesus are as eloquent as his words and may be a sign not of his disapproval but of his approval and his way of providing a deeper blessing for you why my soul are you downcast i will yet praise him Yes, praise him even for his silence. Let him relate a beautiful old story of how one Christian dreamed she saw three other women in prayer. When they knelt, the master drew near to them. As he approached the first of the three, he bent over her with tenderness and grace. He smiled with radiant love and spoke to her in tones of pure, sweet music. Upon leaving her, he came to the next, but only placed his hand upon her bowed head and gave her one look of loving approval. He passed the third woman almost abruptly 
without stopping for a word or a glance. The woman having the dream said to herself, how greatly he must love the first woman. The second gained his approval, but did not experience the special demonstration of love he gave the first. But the third woman must have grieved him deeply, for he gave her no word at all, not even a passing look. She wondered what the third woman must have done to have been treated so differently. As she tried to account for the actions of her Lord, he himself came and stood beside her. He said to her, O woman, how wrongly you have interpreted me. The first kneeling woman needs the full measure of my tenderness and care to keep her feet on my narrow way. She needs my love, my thoughts, and my help every moment of the day. For without them, she would stumble and fall. The second woman has stronger faith and deeper love than the first. And I can count on her to trust me no matter how things may go or whatever people may do. Yet the third woman whom I seem not to notice or even to neglect has faith and love of the purest quality. I am training her through quick and drastic ways for the highest and holiest service. She knows me so intimately and trusts me so completely that she no longer depends on my voice. She no longer depends on my loving glances or any outward signs to know of my approval. She is not dismayed or discouraged by any circumstances I arrange for her to encounter. She trusts me when common sense, when reason and even subtle instinct of the natural heart would rebel. Knowing that I am preparing her for eternity and realizing that the understanding of what I do will come later. My love is silent because I love beyond the power of words to express it and beyond the understanding of the human heart. Also, it is silent for your sakes that ye may learn to love and trust me with pure spirit taught spontaneous responses. I desire for your response to my love to be without the prompting of anything external. He will do wonders never before done if you will learn the mystery of his silence and praise him every time he withdraws his gift from you. Through this, you will better know and love the giver in the moment. And life is taken in the name of hatred. So hard to take. And if we think that it's all good, then we're mistaken. 
mistaken Cause my heart is breaking Tell it, DC. Are you left? Are you right? Pointing fingers, taking sides When are we gonna realize We all bleed the same We're more beautiful when we come together We all bleed the same So tell me why clothes they're wearing or the color of their skin are you black are you white are we all the same inside father open our eyes to see we all bleed the same we're all beautiful when we come together we all bleed the same so tell me I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among men eating beasts whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. You are in the moment with my dad, Pastor Will. 
the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Psalm 34 and 7 A wonderful story is told by a Moravian missionary in connection with angelic protection. An American missionary and his wife bravely went to their station where 20 years before two missionaries had been killed by the natives. They said as they took up their work, it seemed as if often they were surrounded not only by the hostile natives, but by the very powers of darkness. The latter was so real that night after night they were forced to get up and strengthen their hearts by reading the word of God. Again, they would pray. One day a man came and said, I would like to see your watchman close at hand. The missionary replied, I have no watchman. I only have a cook and a little herd boy. What watchman do you mean? The man asked permission to look through the missionary's home. Every corner of the house was carefully searched and the man came out of the house greatly disappointed. Then the missionary asked the man to tell him about the watchman to whom he referred. The man answered, when you and your wife came here, we determined to kill you as we did the missionaries 20 years ago. Night after night, we came to carry out our intentions, but there always stood around your house a double row of watchmen with glittering weapons, and we dare not come near. At last, we hired a professional assassin who said he feared neither God nor devil. Last night he came close to your house. We followed at a distance with our spears. There stood the shiny watchman and the killer fled in terror. So we have given up our purpose to kill you. But tell me, who are your watchmen? The missionary opened the word of God and read, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivered him. Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him. The Lord has hidden them. In the moment. Thank you.
Once upon a time, there was a secret place where heaven's hand is on, leaving those speckles on your face. Some things you'd rather trade, some things you try to fix. Love has one thing to say, it's perfect just the way it is. Judge people with equity? No. In your heart you devise injustice and your hands meet out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O oh God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then people will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. You're in the moment with my papa past the wheel. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I make a fresh commitment to you to live in peace and harmony, not only with the other brothers and sisters of the body of Christ, but also with my friends, my associates, my neighbors, and my family. Father God, I let go of all bitterness, all resentment, all envying, all strife and unkindliness in any form. I give no place to the enemy in Jesus' name. Father, I ask your forgiveness. By faith, I receive it having the assurance that I am cleansed from all unrighteousness through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
I ask you to forgive and release all who have wronged me and hurt me. I forgive and release them. I deal with them in your mercy and your loving kindness. In the name of Jesus, from this moment on, I purpose to walk in love, to seek peace, to live in agreement, and to conduct myself toward others in a manner that is pleasing to you, Lord. Father, I know that I have right standing with you and your ears are attentive to my prayers. As it is written in your word that the love of God has been poured forth into my heart by the Holy Spirit who is given to me. I therefore believe that love flows forth into the lives of everyone I know that I may be filled with and abound in the fruits of righteousness, which will bring glory and honor unto you, Lord. These and all blessings we always pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you realize that you need Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, or if you're not sure that he is, then if you would just pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, I realize that all have sinned and come short of your glory. I also realize that the wages of sin is death, but your gift is eternal life. Lord, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I repent and turn away from my sin. Please, Lord, save my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with me, welcome to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You've been born again. You have received salvation. Heaven is your home and you will live with God forever. Now, if you're not already there, ask God to lead you to a Bible-based church where you can study the word of God, learn the word of God, believe the word of God, and live the word of God that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. God bless you. You came for the orphans and brought us to adoption. Your blood has purchased
From death to life, from bondage to redeemed, we've gone from orphans to adopted, slaves to free. From Oh, 
Turn. 